Good morning, students. Um, this Prezi is on the essential components of the simple machines we've been talking about, in particular, levers and pulleys. Uh, once again, congratulations on all the amazing projects that were turned in uh, these last two days. Everything, um, everything that I wanted you to learn, uh, you guys learned. So you, you did, you really, really rocked that assignment. Thank you very much for that. Uh, okay, simple machines. Uh, let's start with the lever. Uh, this is a review for you. A lever has three parts. Okay, you've got the resistance arm, which is always going to be the part that has the load on it, what you're trying to carry. You've got the fulcrum, which is, I use a, a, a different a word sometimes interchangeably, um, which is the pivot point, okay? So the fulcrum is what makes the seesaw go up and down. You've got the effort arm, okay, which is the part where you do the, where you uh, do the force to pick up the load, okay? Those are the three parts to a lever. Uh, examples of levers are going to be, you know, the wheelbarrow that we talked about yesterday. You got the pliers and you've got a baseball bat. But um, what I want you to notice out of this slide, out of these pictures, is that the fulcrums are in different locations. Okay, sometimes you have the fulcrums right in the middle between the load and the effort. Sometimes you have the fulcrum at the very end. The effort comes first, then the load, then the fulcrum in a wheelbarrow situation. You've got pliers, which is the same as the as, as the seesaw, okay? Even though we don't think of pliers as a seesaw, they're the same type of lever. And they're the same type of lever because on one end, you've got the effort, you've got the fulcrum, and you've got the load. Oops. The same as the seesaw. You've got the, um, actually in the seesaw, it's, it's backwards. It's load, uh, fulcrum, and effort. And then in, in, uh, in a baseball bat, Every time you use a bat, your you your body and the bat become a lever. Okay, um, how do, does it become a lever? You have the resistance on this end, which is the part that you're going to use to hit the ball. You've got the effort part right here, okay, which is the part where you grab onto the bat with your hands. That's going to be the force. Some of us have more force than others when hitting a baseball bat. But the pivot point, the point where the baseball is going to, the baseball bat is going to shift a little bit is right at the very end and that's the fulcrum, okay? So what I wanted you to notice out of these pictures is that the fulcrum is located in different locations in different types of levers, okay? And let's talk about first class levers, okay? First class levers, we have reviewed, this one is the one I think you guys are most familiar with. You have the effort, you've got the fulcrum, and you've got the load, okay? The effort, once again, is where you're going to apply the force. The fulcrum, the pivot point, is what makes the lever go up and down. And the load is obviously the, the arm or the part of the lever that's going to, that has that heavy object for which you're using a simple machine for. The second class lever, okay, notice that the fulcrum is at the end. You've got effort, you, which is how you carry the wheelbarrow, okay? You've got to pick it up so that it rolls on its own or on its wheel. Then you have the load right next to the effort, okay? Which is the dirt or the cement or whatever it is that you're going to dump somewhere else. And you've got the fulcrum. The, the, the fulcrum on the wheelbarrow allows you to create this pivot point to where you're able to push the wheelbarrow up and therefore the load comes out. You've got third class levers, which is the baseball bat that we uh, just saw right now. But in this fishing rod, I want you to see that in, in, in a third class lever, you have it as resistance first, okay? Resistance, then you've got the effort, then the fulcrum, okay? Resistance is this part right here, this part that bends, the part that actually catches onto the fish, okay? The part that the fish, if it's um, uh, if it's a marlin, if it's uh, uh, a tarpon fish, if it's a sailfish, those kind of those kind of game fish, um, anytime you you you're able to catch them with your with your reel, your rod, um, they're going to give you a really strong fight. And this particular part of the rod is what bends, is, is, the, is where you feel the resistance, where the fish is, wants to take you his way. Right here, do you see the arm right here? This, that part of the fishing rod is the one you hold on to, to create the force so that you and the rod don't follow the fish wherever it wants to go. Right here, 
this arm right here is your fulcrum. That's the part where that keeps going up and down as you're trying to manipulate or maneuver the fishing rod in the event you go fishing. That's a third class lever. We've got pulleys. We've talked about pulleys. Uh, you've got fixed pulleys and you've got movable pulleys. Uh, one thing you should know about fixed pulleys is that the reason it's called a fixed pulley is because it is attached to the surface. Okay, it's fixed. It's, it doesn't move. It's just there. The wheel is free spinning. However, this pulley is attached to a surface. A lot of you on your projects, you attached it to the top of the box. Um, you guys fastened it with some um, uh, screws to the top of the, of the board. This is a fixed pulley. You should know, you should learn that a fixed pulley does not reduce the effort. You still have to pull down right here. Okay, if the load is heavy, you are going to have to exert force. Okay, what, uh, what it does for you, okay, the reason that you would want to use a fixed pulley is because it makes things easier. In a flagpole, uh, the flagpole has a fixed pulley on top. And even though the, um, the rope that you're using to bring the flag down or up, it is, it is, a, heavy, it is a heavy endeavor. A pulley makes it easier because it beats putting a ladder and using grommets to put the flag on every morning. You're able to, to attach the flag to the rope and you're able to easily maneuver the up motion and the down motion. And this is what, what pulleys do. They change the direction of the load. In, a, in the flagpole, our, cust our head custodian, every morning at 6.30 in the morning, he uses the pulley to change the direction of the flag, it to, bring, to take it up or to bring it down. A movable pulley, this one right here, it moves with the load. Notice that a movable pulley is part of an attached pulley. This is the, the fixed pulley and this is the movable one. Notice how as he brings the rope down, this load is going to go up with the movable pulley. These pulleys, in contrast to the fixed pulley, these pulleys, the movable pulley, it will reduce the effort. It moves with the load and it also changes the direction of the load. So please be sure to understand the difference between those two. Just as a review, first class lever, okay, you've got the load, the fulcrum, which we, we did a, um, a football um, uh, a football as our fulcrum and a two by four as our lever. Okay. And there is a side where you apply force to, and there is a side where you uh, have a load. Okay. You've got a third class lever just to amplify the picture a little bit, the resistance side, you've got the effort and you've got the fulcrum at the end, which is where you pivot, uh, your hands to swing the ball. Okay. Second class lever is, is the wheelbarrow. You've got the force that you've got to pick up the wheelbarrow to make it move on its wheel. Then you have the load right here, and the wheel becomes the fulcrum, becomes the pivot point. Now, um, there is a formula. There is a math formula for work. And why would we need a math formula for work? Um, often we try to calculate how much work is being done. So far with our projects, you were able to show me that work was done. But if we were to compare project A to project B, a lot of you did pulleys. If I were to compare this pulley to that pulley to see what kind of work was done, you use this formula. Work equals force times distance, okay? Force times distance. The unit for work, if you recall from our past lectures, the unit for distance that we've been using is the meter. The unit for temperature that we've been using is the degrees, degree. The unit for volume was the milliliter. Okay, just like all those um, measuring systems have units, the unit for work is the joule, okay, which is spelled out here for you. Now, the unit for force, okay, for force is the newton, okay? How many newtons does it take to, to pick up this load, okay? The force, the unit for force is Newton, and it's spelled out here for you. And the unit for distance is the familiar meter, okay? So let's try something out. Um, if we want to, to practice, let's read this math problem. It says a forklift 
okay i hope everybody can picture a forklift it's it's uh, little vehicles that are found in warehouses okay that have two uh it looks like they have two um uh prongs okay and the prongs they lift up boxes over to the top part of the warehouse or top part of um, storage shelves a forklift moves 34 meters carrying a 10 1023 newton box okay across the warehouse floor so this forklift is moving for 32 meters okay from one part of the warehouse to the other carrying a load of 1023 newtons okay across the um uh the warehouse floor how much work is being done by the forklift let's set up our problem what are the two numbers that we know we know distance because 34 meters was given to us. We know force because 1,023 newtons were given to us. And we know that anytime they're talking about meters, they refer to distance. Anytime they talk about newtons, they refer to force. Okay, so let's perform the calculation. The formula is work equals force times distance. So let's put let's put this in perspective. We're trying to figure out how much work is being done by the um, uh, how many joules of work are being done by this forklift? If you multiply 1,023 by 34, the answer is 34,782. Now, 34,782 is the amount of work that's being done. And the way we write that down is 34,782J for joules, okay? As our conclusion, okay, simple machines, this is the main thing that I want you to remember as you go through these slides. Simple machines do not eliminate work, guys. They make work easier, okay? Next time someone claims that they did more work than you, remember that there is a formula to check it out. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to do your whisk. See you, to, see you tomorrow.